All right, today, another kind of short video, just picking up where we left off last time. We've got the rest of the optical switches, the correct ones now, the white and black combination from Pinball Life versus the incompatible ones I had got that I had left over in my stash for uh, repairs I was doing. So we're gonna get those set up. I've got like three more of those. We need to get in place around some drop targets to hopefully hold the ball and trap it behind a, a drop target. Kind of like that whole like Denise um, lock type idea. And then a couple others, one to trigger that up down um, horseshoe diverter post. I wanna put one in there. So a couple of different things. We gotta drill into our metal guide a little bit, make a, make a hole for these. We'll show you how I'm going through and soldering these up and wiring them in. All right, so let's hurry and bust through that because after that we gotta get onto our upper play field. All right, here we go. All right, so if you remember, on these ones, we've got black and we've got white. The white is the emitter. The emitter is the one that will go through and get wired up and connected to this little fast um, infrared board, little opto board. Okay, it controls the power, make sure these don't get burned out. And then the black one on the back of it, it just gets wired up like a typical switch. One will be a ground going back to our I.O. board and one will be um, the actual like, switch input going into the switch um, receptacle on that I.O. board. Okay, so these are them. Um, they come by default, very uh, very empty, very clean. There's just, just the flat metal. There's no solder really or anything on there. So we need to go through and add a bunch of flux and solder onto these pads to prep them for the wire, okay? So I've gone ahead and done that, okay? So just heated up my soldering iron, got it on that pad. So the pad got some heat on it also to make sure it's stuck and ran some flux on that, okay? So we kind of pre-soldered those with those nice bumps. Then what we have to do is take the wires and basically just kind of press them in and it'll heat up with that and we'll get a nice solid connection for each one of these, okay? All right, I know people like me to talk tools a little bit and kind of show you what I'm doing. So this is the soldering iron I have, okay, that I got off Amazon. Um, it's not super high end, but it's a lot better than the really cheap like little $10 specials you get. It um, has a nice control, heats up really good. It's got its own little um, copper bed in here you can clean off your tip with and obviously a holder for it. Switch it on, you can spin up to where you want. I'm gonna get it really set right around 700 um, Fahrenheit is about where I do. Once you get it set, boop, it'll go through and start showing the numbers cranking up. As it heats up, it heats up nice and fast. So it's a good one. Again, I'm not saying it's top of the line, but it's been solid and works really good. A couple of the other cheaper ones I had would not get up much over like 550 or 600. And sometimes on some of these manufacturer solder connections, like you needed to get up to around 700 to really be able to get in there and not have it take like minutes and minutes and risk burning out of this other parts of your board or anything. So, okay, so that's up and ready to go. All right, guys, so this is one of those incompatible ones I had that I already gone through and wired up. And so I've already been using um, this little connector that goes to the fast board. And so what you're gonna wanna do when you get these, when you get these guys from Pinball Life, you just need some 22 gauge wire, okay? And then this board from Fast comes with like four or five of these little um, connectors here at the end that are compatible with the board, okay? And then it also comes with it also comes with a bunch of these little guys. I forget what size, 0.156 or 0.100. They're small um, that you'll crimp on. Remember, with our crimping tool, okay? And then they'll be able to slide inside here, okay? Now. I've already, already gone through and done that with the wrong ones, so what you're gonna see me doing is just taking it off of this guy, all right? I'm just gonna borrow the wires from here and switch it across, okay? And then if you remember from our picture, and I'll flash it up here again, okay? We're gonna be looking at the back of this emitter, okay? And on the back, there's li little letters. I don't know how well you can see that on my screen or not, but there is an A and a K, right? For anode and cathode, all right? And if you consult the picture up there, you'll see the anode coming out the left side of the diagram, that's what needs to run down and go to a certain side of this little connector. It's gonna go on the left side also, okay? So it's nice to kind of have like different colored wire for this. You can tell, you know, in case they, 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 they twist as you go through, okay. So you're gonna do yellow and blue or whatever colors you want, right? Okay, yellow is gonna be for the anode, gonna carry it. We're gonna solder it here on the anode side, right? Boop, and then we're gonna carry that one down through into the right spot here on the switch. So when it plugs into the board, when it plugs into the board, it's going on, on the correct side also. Okay, so just, just keep track, right? It's simple, just follow the colors like on the diagrams, make sure yours is going the same way so the signals are coming across correctly, okay? And put the tip on the wire on top of the flux, let the heat transfer through the wire so it gets hot as well. And then once it gets shiny, you can pull off slowly and let it cool back down. You gotta hold it in place as it cools back down, right? A little soldering 101 here. Common question people have on soldering is how do I know if I have 
a good a good solder joint, a good connection or not, Steve. Um, again, I'm not a master electrician or solderer, but from the things I've read and learned and a little bit of practice, um, if the solder still looks nice and shiny, not just when it heats up, it always turns shiny, but then as you let go and it cools down, it stays fairly shiny. Um, that means you've got a good connection. You'll see, you'll hear people talk about cold solder joints. Those tend to be like old solder joints or ones that are done poorly where the heat wasn't really like evenly distributed between um, the two parts you're connecting and the solder. Maybe it's just the solder got hot and the rest really didn't have enough heat and so it won't stick as well. And the solder will end up being more kind of like dull or almost cloudy looking and kind of rough looking, not smooth and shiny. That's a telltale sign of not a good joint. It's probably gonna work, but it will very likely fail or just not have a very solid connection really, um, electronically speaking, right? So even if it still kind of sticks, it's super cloudy and dirty, like you should try to clean it up. If you heat it up and it still kind of stays cloudy, that solder is pretty much just spent. You'll probably want to go through with like a copper braid and just pull off all of the old solder and just start fresh with new flux and new solder and have it a new joint. So all right, so we've got the optical switches all wired up here and we've got a couple of different places I want to be putting them. So we're going to have one at the base of the stairs right here. <laughs> There's going to be a pair right here. That way you can see that. All right. So whenever, whenever a ball comes in here, it's going to trip that and know to raise our drop target and block a second ball from coming in. So we have a pair there that need to get mounted. Easy peasy. We'll screw them in. And then we've got a pair back here. I'm going to put in right behind this third drop target. Okay. And the same idea here, whenever a ball comes past here, this is kind of like our Denisi lock thing. We'll have to check our range. Whenever the ball comes by here, then this last drop target will pop up and hold the ball in place. That's the thought there. Now I also have a set of optical switches ready to go in um, right about here. I thought about putting an optical switch right in here. I should have room on either side of this ball guide. So when the ball comes up here, and again, the right conditions have been met in the, in the code, but for right now, whenever the ball passes by here, then this coil will activate so the ball can come behind over here. Okay, so I've made a couple simple little little marks on the metal and we're going to go through and draw a little hole that the optical beam can go between or can go through. So I need to take out this ball guide. I've already got it loose and then this ball guide from the stairs needs to come out. We need to get a hole drilled in each of those. All right, out in the cold garage with the heater going. We need to drill some holes I got a mark here in the metal about where it needs to be. What size hole do we need, you say? Well, let's go through and look here. Were they handy in any calipers? The outside of this holder for the lens is just over nine millimeters. The inside, if we get it here, is just over six. And if we switch this across over here to our imperial and our fractions, one quarter. Okay, so we need a quarter inch. So. I've seen people use these type of bits for cutting through metal up. I've never used them before, so hey, let's give them a shot. I got a little three pack off Amazon and we want quarter inch hole. All right. So one quarter is the second hole or the kind of the second ridge. Yep. Got an extra piece of wood I can drill into. Got this clamped down. Want to measure and double check exactly how high up this needs to be in the middle for the center. There's our hole, our hole. Looks pretty good. So the top side we drilled into came out good and didn't, other than like the rat tail a little bit, didn't really need to be filed, which is nice. This is the side that's gonna be kind of showing to the player. The back side I cut into had a little bit of curls um, blowing out through it. So I had to take a file and smooth that up a little bit. Don't want anybody, anybody myself getting cut on this when I'm putting it back into place. But that's, that's a nice hole. And it is more than enough size for that beam to be coming through. All right, now the other one. All 
All right, let's get these back in place. Here we go, checking our optos. That one's firing good. <laughs> that one fired, but it's an auto fire, so it's not it's not holding the coil down. Okay, so we'll need to configure that one differently. So when it goes through, it holds it down for a period of time. But it's working. The switch is being tripped. That one's being tripped. Go in here and knock down a few of these drop targets. If I can hit it. <laughs> Can hit it smoothly. Boom. He's being held and we can release. Yay. That's what we want. Looking pretty good. All right, there you go. That's what we wanted to do today. We got all the optical switches, those optos up and wired and working. They're tripping the max. Everything's firing, everything's going good. We still got a long ways to go, as you can see, right? All those mechs are set up as auto fire coils. We got to come back through in another video and spend some more time talking about config files and go another level deeper and talk about ball devices, all right? That way, Mission Pinball Framework will actually know what's going on. So it knows it's a diverter and it needs to hold the coil and not just fire it once, right? All those type of things. So another video coming for that. But the very first thing I want to um, get into next is I want to start working on our upper play field. We got this awesome staircase mech, right? That moves the ball up, but it goes nowhere. So we got to get it to a platform. We got to get the flipper bats up there. I want to make sure those mechs fit, fit underneath the play field. That will then also, once we have that nailed down, determine the final path for the subway and it'll all start coming back around again, okay? Thanks for watching. Um, thank you so much, everybody. Been super just like humbled by the amount of views, all the great comments. Everyone's super engaged. Exactly what I wanted. You guys are giving me really good feedback, a lot of good questions, a lot of good tips and other ideas for those of you who've already done it before. Keep it coming. I love it. We're all learning together, all right? If you haven't started your own pinball machine, get going on building your own. If you have already, thank you everybody who's helping and sh continue to share your work. Everybody loves to see it, so... Thanks so much, guys, and appreciate just being being part of your world here. It's awesome. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.